Do you feel uninspired when it comes to daily movement? Or maybe you lack inspiration? In today's video, I'll show you what I do for movement every week, how much I do it, and finally, why every type of movement is necessary or beneficial and how it serves me. So stay tuned for how I keep my face muscles firm, why simply walking is not enough, and why you might still be gaining weight despite all your efforts if you are around your 40s and beyond, especially if you are a woman, and what to do about it. Let's start with my daily morning routine that also involves movement. First things first, brushing my teeth with tooth powder that's made of four different clays and peppermint oil. It doesn't mess with mouse microbiota, mineralizes the teeth and leaves the breath fresh. I haven't found any other tooth powder that would use four clays in their formula. That's why I stick to it. I'll link it below. Now it's time for face yoga. Yes, face yoga. I've been doing it for four years now and I see results. I started at 38 when I noticed that my face had become a little saggy. And I don't lie when I say that after the first day, my face muscles literally ached. Yes, there are muscles in your face, and if you don't use them, you lose them. For the first month, I did the exercises three times a day, then reduced to two times, and now for maintenance, I squeeze it into my routine once or twice a day. And believe me, it works. My cheeks became much firmer after just a week of doing the exercises. After face yoga, I do Tibetan hormonal gymnastics. It takes only about 10 minutes and it supports all the endocrine glands that produce hormones. It consists of 10 rejuvenating exercises. Who knows if it's just a placebo or a real thing, but it makes me feel good and stretched. Now make sure to subscribe and have the notification bell turned on for when I publish the full sequence, plus my own stretches. After those exercises and before going outside, I take a cold shower. More on the benefits of cold later. Now, I try to go outside every morning to get the natural light into my eyeballs, which plays a crucial role in your ability to fall asleep at night. A side note, you need three types of exercises for optimal body and brain health. Those are cardio, strength resilience training and something that develops your motor skills. So, my activities may be either walking, running, cycling and or swimming if I didn't take cold shower in the morning. I started the swimming with warm temperatures and kept on going when the air turned a lot cooler. Here you can see me taking a dip with 12 degrees Celsius, real feel 8 degrees. I'll tell you, it's all in your mind. In the beginning of the summer, I wouldn't have believed that by the end of it, I take cold showers and go into cold sea. If I can do it, so can you. Why the cold water anyway? It's rejuvenating and makes you stronger by supporting the immune system. Hot, cold, hunger and being out of breath are all intermittent and moderate stressors on the body. And the cell's adaptive response to those stressors is called hormesis. Hormesis activates a variety of cellular mechanisms and signaling pathways that promote stress resilience, repair cellular damage, DNA, combat oxidative stress, produce new mitochondria, reduce inflammation, support elimination of toxins, improve blood sugar regulation, reduce risk of cancer, and more. In fact, some experts believe that if you don't expose yourself to enough hormetic stress, it's hard to achieve optimal health and well-being. It helps our cells to perform cellular house cleaning activities that slow aging. If I go running, I also walk, evidently. Sometimes I combine running with upper body strength training right by the sea. Or do a full body strength training at home. Again, it's time to make sure you have the bell notification turned on because I release my 20 minute full body workout real soon. Here's a short preview of some of the exercises that I do. They include working on both lower and upper body. Now is the time to address the importance of strength training, especially for women above 40. I gotta be honest with you. 
I never thought of resilience training as something essential before I discovered Deborah Atkinson and watched her TED talk a bit less than a year ago. Muscles are a big organ and it plays a crucial role in blood sugar regulation, for example. The key point is that most women are doing it wrong, following exercise recommendations based on young athletic men at the peak of their performance. The good news is that it's not about more exercise, it's about less and correct exercise. Did you know that only about 35% of all fitness studies are done about women? And even those don't take into account our monthly and lifetime cycles. Deborah explains it all in her TED talk. The link is below. Go check it out not to continue following bad and wrong fitness advice. We need to have workout days and rest days to recover and build muscle. Those days include only gentle movements and or some core exercises. Again, thank you Deborah for introducing me to training my core. This sequence is only about 8 minutes long. Anyone can schedule it into their day. Stay tuned for the full video. By the way, the full workout videos will enable you to play them and do the exercises with me. Excited to be your workout buddy! There is one more thing that I try to squeeze into my evening. And that is a 10 minute gentle flexing and hip opening yoga sequence. I feel better every time I do it. It stretches my body after a long day and is good for the digestion as well. I only wish I was as persistent with this one as with my morning routine. Watch out for the notification for when the full go along video is published. And now about duration and sequence of each of the exercises. In general, I aim for 300 to 500 exercise calories every day. My aura ring is a great helper to track the goal. I try to do strength training three times a week, about 20 minutes each session. On those days I get the rest of the movement from either walking, cycling or running. I aim to be breathless at least once every day. I live on the fifth floor, so even running upstairs counts. As I just began my running habit, I may run only 2-4 to four kilometers for now. However, I'll gradually raise the bar and increase my stamina. Running is a great way to be breathless as well. And you don't have to cover long distances at a stretch. Feel free to spurt and then rest, spurt again and rest. I run about 3 times a week. When I cycle, I usually do a 1 hour, about 18 kilometer trip. In the summer I cycled about five times a week, now when it's colder it has reduced to once a week. Next, I try to do the 8 minute core exercise sequence a few times a week. Overall, I take about one hour and a half for my daily movement, a bit less when the intensity is higher, for example when I go for a run. I hope you're inspired and don't forget to check out what Deborah Atkinson has to say in her TED talk. I'd like to know what's your favorite way of getting the needed exercise. Just drop me a comment.